So now we see what the process is. In our end, <clears throat> post-fall, we're completely empty. We have no knowledge. We have no ability. But we do have one thing, and it's really fast and powerful. We have an innate ability to imitate. We also have an innate ability to just absorb everything like a sponge. Your soul lives on faith. Faith means that you believe something. You accept something. And all this information coming into you, you just accept it when you first start. And because you accept it, you are, you are getting the information deposited. And once it's deposited, your next reflex is to imitate what you got. So mommy smiles at you and you smile back, even though you don't know that she's smiling and you don't know what it is. You just, you just have this, you receive the smile and your, your muscles move in the same direction. Even though you don't know you saw that, even though you don't recognize what it is that you saw, because really all you see is light and blur and color and you don't even know that's what it is you mimic that's how all the animals learn things now you go from being as it were an animal absorbing and mimicking <clears throat> this is what distinguishes you from an animal and why you're not evolved after a certain amount of Im imitation Unlike an animal, you can question why. I don't know if you've never noticed, but I don't if you've ever had pets, they never plan for the future. They have instincts that do things that to us look like they're planning for the future, but they aren't, and they never question. Animals don't question. They don't ask why. <clears throat> they don't understand things. Like sometimes a dog will cock his head. He's trying to hear. Because he doesn't understand. That doesn't mean he's asking why. He just doesn't understand. We mistake because we're human. A lot of animal activity and motions that are socialized into them because they're imitators as actual thought processes going on inside their head. But they're imitators. They can imitate the kind of behaviors that we have that are driven by thought. They imitate those behaviors so we think they got thought. It's not thought in them. It's imitation. So, too, we are imitators. So, the first step in maturation is absorption of everything around you. The second step is to imitate what you absorbed. The third step, and this is unique to humans, you have to analyze. Now, there have been a lot of anthropological, you know, experiments done with animals that try to argue that animals learn but that's not really what's happening what's happening is they imitate and when they imitate something and it also gets something that they want then they imitate the movement that got them what they want more often that's not exactly learning that's still imitation it's a directed imitation that shows that volition is present. Okay? But that's not a soul. And that doesn't mean that, you know, how do you want to call it? That doesn't mean that, that they have a thought process like you. They have wants, they have instincts, they have needs. And when their needs get met by a certain imitated behavior being repeated, they will repeat it again. Now, we humans have that in common also. Unlike animals, we can analyze. 
but it takes a lot of information getting into your head and a desire to analyze why. The questioning process. A person has to want to ask why. If the question isn't asked, then nothing is learned. And you end up becoming more like an animal than a human. Because no matter how many times you repeat something, every, I mean, how do I want to put this? Like an animal, you repeat an activity, and if on certain occasions it gets you what you want, you'll remember that and you'll repeat it again. So you'll start repeating that particular activity more often just like an animal. That doesn't mean you're learning anything. That means you're choosing. That's not learning. Choosing is not learning. Learning, by contrast, asks the question and keeps on looking for the answer. And then when it gets the answer, keeps on looking still. That's learning. You keep, you, you learn, you, you look for an answer, you finally get the answer, and then you keep on learning. That's the only way you grow out of being like an animal as a human. Most people don't do that. What questions they ask are rudimentary, and as soon as they get a rudimentary answer, they stop asking questions because they like the feel of being animalistic. Peter called us brute beasts long before Hobbes said that life was nasty, brutish, and short. We are like brute, brute beasts. In the Old Testament, I don't know if Peter's thinking of this verse when he says it, but in the Old Testament, the, the term is cows of Bashan. Cows are among the stupidest animals ever on the planet. That's why they invented cattle prods. A cattle prod is something that would probably kill you or me, or at least paralyze us. But a cattle prod in, in, a, in a cow, just barely, the, the cow is aware of it. You need to use a cattle prod to get a cow moving. There are two things to get a cow moving. Well, three things. The cattle prod, and not that not for very long. Fear and anger. That's all. And then once it's moving in the direction of fear, they'll just keep on moving right over a cliff. And if it's moving in the direction of anger, it'll just keep on moving until it hits a tree. It has absolutely no discernment about when to stop. It's just angry. So that's why you need, you know, cow, cowboys and all the rest of it. To channel the direction of the fear or the anger. That's what humans can be like. Cows of Bashan. Now... You probably don't want to be a cow. And this is before we even start talking about maturation as a human. We're talking about being an animal or being a human. So then anybody can direct you any way he or she wants. If you're living that kind of life. Which most humans are. No discernment. You gotta be basically hit over the head with something before you even recognize that there's an issue. And then you only recognize it for a few minutes and then you go right back to being a cow. That's human history. That's why we don't learn from history. That's why all our yesterdays are not informing our todays, so therefore our tomorrow is not gonna be better. Because we didn't learn from yesterday. Now, maturation, therefore, as a human is a very rare thing. And maturation as a spiritual being is more rare yet. With the result that when you get dead, you're wherever it was you were when you died in your soul. Largely a cow in your thinking. 
So now that you're dead, let's presume at least as a cow, you once believed Jesus Christ paid for your sins. Well, now you're going to be a cow waking up in heaven. Oh, this God thing is real. Who's God again? And you're starting all over as if you were a newborn baby. Well, you don't have a sin nature obstructing your growth anymore. But you don't have anything inside your soul that equips you for heaven. You believe, so juridically you're there, and you might as well be two and a half weeks old. you got to start all over. And therefore, those few who did mature are going to have the job of nurturing and raising you so that you too can learn to have a process with God that matures on a daily basis forever. This is what Satan didn't do. This is what Christians and Jews don't do, even when they're saved. They want the baby stuff. I want to count my works. I want my works to count. And I want to be able to say that Johnny next door who doesn't do my works, he's inferior to me. So I can say I'm a good person because I'm so insecure and childish. I need to say I'm a good person and I constantly need positive reinforcement from other people around me. And the more people who praise me, the better I must be, even if all the people praising me are stupid. And they will be if they're praising you. That's the human race right there. Saved or unsaved. So now you see why the integration process is the issue. It never really ends. We're all really childish on something. And the last increment was, you know, ask God, where am I childish? That's the best thing you can do for everybody else. And so I had left it saying, well, where am I childish? I better go talk to him. And this is where I'm childish. I don't like this being true. I don't like walking out the door in the morning and knowing that everybody around me is virtually poor. And I can't do a thing about it. And yeah, I too am spiritually poor in, in terms of the function. It took years and years and years just to get all this information in my head. But they don't even have the information, so whatever functions they got doesn't mean anything. So my worst function with the knowledge in my head is far better than their best function. And honey, they're all better than me in function. As far as I'm concerned, that's my opinion. I look at somebody else and, oh, wow, look at all the things they can do. Because I'm like five years old in my soul on that topic. Oh, you can do this so much better than me. And so I admire them. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, in real life with real people, I'm always constantly in awe of how great they are and how stupid I am. But that's not the truth. They don't know. I do. And all the stuff that they can do that I can't do that I admire so much is coming from a base of spiritual ignorance. So what worth is it? Nothing. But they can do stuff. And why? Why are they better at doing stuff than me? Because I'm supposed to be better at knowing stuff than them. Because that's all I can do. Therefore, all the stuff that they do, they're doing for me. I hate knowing that. It sounds so arrogant and it sounds so disgusting. And I just want to kill myself. Because I don't like that. I, I hate it. But aren't I being childish? If I didn't have the knowledge, they wouldn't be blessed. Because they don't want the knowledge. They want the dues. So yeah, they're capable. They're functioning. They're able to do all kinds of stuff. And I need them to be able to do that. Because I spent my time learning. I didn't intend to trade it off like that. I just wanted to know. And then I forgot about learning how to do stuff. With the result that now I'm dependent on them for the dues, and I got the nose. And they need my nose, because their dues are all they got. 
And so long as their dues are able to do for me, then God can justify blessing their dues, which would otherwise just be to do. I hate that. I hate that more than I can tell you. It hurts so much I can't breathe. But see, that's what he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 12. You got the head and you got the body. And that's how it ends up in eternity too. Millions upon millions upon millions of Christians got real proficient in doo-doo. And since you got a body in eternity, there's going to be some kind of doing. And they'll be real good at it. God will kid them out to be good at it. And if you got to be king of that kingdom that he gives you, they will be your property and they'll be doing for you. And you'll be knowing for them. And your knowing will transfer to them in dribs and drabs a little bit per person every day. Drip, drip, drip. Trickle down economics. That's God. Because what the people who hate trickle down economics don't understand is that's what people like. People resent it if you got a lot of money and you try to give them some. They either feel that they've got to take it from you or trick you out of it. But if you just flat give it to them because you want to and they didn't ask, they hate you for it. They think you're trying to show how much better you are than them. They resent it. You cannot give wealth away. It has to trickle down. So God's going to create a whole polity, a whole economy, or economia in eternity so the trickle down economics of his thinking can work and people really will enjoy it then in the small tiny amounts that they came to vote for when they were down here they voted for a tiny life they voted for a tiny soul they're getting what they voted for and you voted to know him so you got what you voted for so now you're ahead in their body now you're united And the story is already true like that down here. So that's why they get blessed. That's how the integration process works in mass. In aggregate. And I don't know about you, but I'm still constantly amazed how how people can even want to learn the things they want to learn. I mean, look at all the time that people spend making stupid movies about vampires and zombies. Do you know how much time cost that is? Do you know how people are spending their whole lives on that kind of activity? And now they get to their own grave and it's like, what did you spend your life on? Oh, I made vampire movies. I'm Ed Wood. I made a lot of bad movies. And I made so many bad movies that Johnny Depp made a movie about me making bad movies. And he started it as Ed Wood. Well, why did he want to make a movie like that? Why did he spend however long it took to make that movie? Why do people make Bible movies and they're always wrong? Look at the movies we make, how stupid they are. And we make them in order to make money. That means people want to spend time watching stupid movies. That's how they like to spend their time. Oh, pretty. Oh, big. Oh, see the Incredible Hulk pounce and smash. Oh, wow. Power. What, you think it's going to be different in the eternal state? I hate this truth so much I can't tell you. And God's reply is, Suffer the little children. What was it? Romans 15, 1 through 3. The strong must bear the weaknesses of the weak. 
He's bearing my weakness. And he loves it. Not because he's superior, but because he lives, as it were, to make my life better. That pleases him. I don't understand it. I can only report it. That's where I'm childish. Now, maybe your childishness is somewhere else. Maybe you get a big thrill out of making somebody else's life better, out of bringing them up. Okay, then you don't have my weakness. Your strength is somewhere else. Or your strength is there. And your weakness is somewhere else. Find out where it is. Because whatever it is, is going to hold you back in your relationship with him. And again, that's the only way you can do anything about this problem. Ask God to fix you. And that will fix them. And now you've got the bigger long-term picture of the integration process of the body. And ideally you being king of that body. So now you have a better understanding of why.